Hello everybody, welcome to Create with Chris at Cupboard Distributing. We are going to paint today an adorable Santa ornament. So if you have your surfaces and your paints ready, we are going to start in just a moment. Let me show you. This is what we are painting today. And um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about it in just a minute, but I wanted to give you a chance to make sure you have your ornament base coated with light buttermilk and the face area is warm beige. So I'm gonna give you time to get that painted up while we talk a little bit more. Um, so I'm gonna chit chat a bit and you can get busy and get started with your base coating. For those of you that may not know me, I am Chris Hoy. Welcome to Create with Chris. I'm so excited that you are here today. Uh, love to paint and with everything going on in this crazy society that we're in, how nice it is to be able to have something that we can do to enjoy and share and just relax and um, live in our happy space. So, um, I am, for those of you that may not know me, I am the owner and founder of Cupboard Distributing, Pixelated Palette Easing, Scrapbook Outlet, CD Stencils, Chris Hoy Designs. I love to paint. I'm an artist, went to college for fine art. Um, that kind of, you know how in life things change. So that was something that definitely changed for me and everything is good. I'm glad I'm where I'm at and um, truly blessed to be able to do what I love to do and to share it. I mean, how awesome is that? So um, today we are painting the Santa ornament. And for those of you that may not be aware, this is a free pattern that you can download if you go to Cupboard Distributing. Let me go on there real quick, www.cdwood.com. Um, in the pattern section, there is a little tab on the left that you can push. There's a button that says patterns. You click on that and it'll say free patterns and you just go on there and download um, your Santa pattern for free. And then you can, uh, this, this will be a replay also. So you can paint along with me today. You can download your pattern and, and paint by yourself or you can download the pattern and replay and paint with me later. So you have lots of options and we like that. Okay, so because I think, let me go over here real quick. Um, most of you know, a couple weeks ago, has it, I have Lindsay here to my left. Hello. And it looks like the right, oh, hi, Lindsay. Hi. <laughs> um, I did the snowman ornament, and that was a couple weeks ago, uh, at least. So if you've not painted him, he is a free download as well. And what a cute little couple they make, right? So after I did the snowman, everyone loved it. And I thought, golly, we should do a Santa to make, you know, have, have a friend with him. Let me zoom out just a little bit. But you know, once you do that, um, you know, things evolve and change. So looky what I did. I have a gingerbread and yes, we are going to do that next. So keep an eye out for this guy. I will tell you, it will be a free pattern. It is not online yet. However, um, I've been working my little tail off trying to get things caught up and he is almost ready to be online. So within the next couple of days, he will be available. But what I want to tell you is we've got Summerfest coming up and it's gonna be kind of um, a lot going on in cupboard distributing world. So uh, Create with Chris, Next time we air, I will paint this. It will be September 1st. So you don't have to worry about remembering that. I will remind you, but just a heads up. Isn't it cute? And I, I was telling the girls, if you do um, craft fairs or anything, you could make a bundle and sell a set of ornaments. And here's another thought I had. Um, if you have all three of these and you're selling them individually, everybody's gonna to have to get all of them, right? I mean, you wouldn't wanna just buy one so that you're gonna sell the whole set. What, what a fun little set of ornaments. Okay, 
Did I miss anything yet, Lindsay? Mm, not that I can think of. Okay, so we are going to, let me go back. Well, I guess we're good here. I think we're ready to get started. Check all my notes. I always put notes everywhere and make sure um, things are good. Now, when I did make my pattern, I used the, um, that transfer paper that you can put in your printer. It's a nice heavy vellum, um, but it's really nice so you can go ahead and trace your pattern on and then you have a really nice uh, design that you can place directly on your piece and you don't have to spend all that time tracing the pattern again. The only thing I traced, as you can see, is the face area. That's all we're gonna worry about. The rest of it, we're just gonna wing it. If anyone's ever painted with me, I always think that um, the less pencil marks and tracing marks that you have to make, um, the smoother it's gonna flow, it's gonna look nicer. So I, I never trace over trace. And I know a lot of times you pace, trace the whole pattern then you get ready to paint it and half of it you cover up and have to trace it again. So we'll trace what we need as we need. So right at this point, this is all we're gonna go with. Okay, so everybody's got their face on there. I think I've talked long enough to let it all dry. So we are going to go in, again, this was um, warm beige, and if you have an old bottle, it's called Flesh Tone. So they just changed the name on it. And a lot of people say, well, why did they do that? And it has to do with marketing. Warm beige is a much more marketable color than Flesh Tone. So when you see Flesh Tone, that's all you think this color is good for. But with warm beige, look how pretty that is. If you've not used, uh, thought about using it for other things, um, that's probably why, because your mind's already set that it is just flesh tone. So we are going with dried clay, formerly known as shading flesh. And dried clay is another beautiful color. And until they changed the name, I really hadn't thought about it. But it is very versatile. I am going to use um, I have a half inch angle, a little bit of paint on my palette, and I like a bigger brush. Just gonna get the toe of it and work that paint in. Let it blend across the brush, but it's not so far across that I'm going to lose my color or get too much. I'm working it into the bristles, so I have a nice float. It's slightly damp. If your paintbrush begins to drag, you don't have enough moisture in your brush. So I'm going to scoop it up the sides, across the top, and it's dragging a little bit. A lot of times when you first get your brush wet, you just don't have enough moisture in it. So I'm gonna get a little more water, there we go. And down the side. So we have our shading around, it's below the brim of his hat, down both sides. And we're just gonna let that dry for a second. And I'm going with a quarter inch angle. Now, if you want to, this is where you could trace your pattern on. I'm okay with that. My nose is going to be right here. So I'm just gonna kind of put my little nose in there. And I know when my nose comes down, I have a little bit of a bridge there. And I'm gonna swoop it under the eyes. So I've got my little eyelids or eyebrows. This is where your eyebrows are gonna be placed. Let me go this way, it makes it a little easier for me. And now I've got this one here and I'm swooping it down the nose. Okay. Simple, right? We just did a little round nose. We've got his eye placement and his bridge of his nose. And that's it. That's all we're gonna do for the, get the face where it needs to go. I'll put this one here so you can see it. We're gonna go back and jazz it up a little bit. Now, um, let's see. My little nose is higher on this one than that one, and I'm okay with that. And so every one of mine's different because I never use a pattern. 
I think you put your own thumbprint on it. It's, it's okay. It doesn't have to be totally identical. All right, so we've got that nose on there. We need to blush these cheeks. I'll make sure that's dry. And we've got the air on. It's pretty warm out. Um, the fans are going, so everything here is drying rather quickly. And I'm going back to my half inch angle just because, again, I like the width of the brush. Watermelon slice. Just get the toe in there. Now, I want him to have rosy cheeks, um, but I don't want him to be real red. So I'm using thinned paint. And the way I do that, I get a little bit on a damp brush. I work it in and blend it across. I don't know if you can see where we're at here. Can you see how it's blended across the brush? Just a touch. I'll try it. If it's not enough, I'll add more. Just gonna swoop that down side of his face and over here. Now remember, we've got that mustache going in there. So I've just blushed the cheeks on just like that. We're good. And I'm picking up, I think I'm gonna go to my awesome angle. There we go. And my awesome angle is eighth inch. It's a great little brush, has that extra length on it to give you a little more stroke length so you don't have those short choppy strokes picking just a little bit of it up on the toe of my brush blending it well enough moisture to make sure it's going to float and we're going to give that little guy a rosy nose chris someone um kathy asked what is a replacement color for watermelon slice all right we were talking about this watermelon slice and um i don't know we just got a uh, Oh, okay. DecoArt <laughs> just uh, sent us a shipment. We just unloaded the truck a little while ago. Haven't been back there to see, but Lindsay's shaking her head no on watermelon slice. Um, there's a new color. It's called Wild Berry, and it's kind of a pinkish blush, but it's a pretty color. And if it's a little bit too pink, you can always slip a little bit of red in there. Um, but I have used that in lieu of watermelon slice. And it's just it's a very comparable um, hue to replace watermelon slice with. Now I know my Santa looks like he's been on a little bit of a drinking binge, but we'll we'll tone that down a little bit. So hang in there with me. All right, let's do his eyes next. And on the eyes, I am using soft black. And going back to substituting colors. Um, there are some colors, obviously black, white, that, that are hard to substitute with, but when it comes to reds, and DecoArt has such a plethora of reds that there's so many to choose from, something close, it absolutely will work. And you'll probably be the only one that ever knows that that wasn't the exact color. And don't be afraid to mix colors. I mix colors all the time. Um, Back in the day when we had all of these solid backgrounds to try to mix a color, um, if you had to go back and touch up, you know what I'm talking about. It was kind of a really, uh, could be a traumatic thing. So uh, with, with the way we paint today with all the colors and the, the textured backgrounds, mixing colors just adds that much more interest. All right, so let's do the eyes. I've got my stylus. Um, I probably could go with a bigger stylus, but what I do, if I don't have a stylus with a big enough tip on it, you can either use a smaller end, handle end of a brush. A pencil point works really well as, as well. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop up a little bit heavier plop of paint on my stylus and we're gonna put his eyes in. Now, I like his eyes to be kind of a pear shape, so I'm gonna start at the bottom and pull up, and I'm gonna check this to make sure this is what I wanna do. Okay, so make sure you check that on your palette before you do that, and I'm gonna see what happens with a small brush. 
I think I kind of like the bigger one a little bit better. So I'm going to go with my brush handle. Now you want to make sure these are going to be the same size. So I'm going to dip, I'm going to dot at the bottom and drag to the top. And um, I tilt it in just a touch. Now to make sure the other eye is going to match, I'm going to wipe my handle of the brush off. Now if you have paint on there and you add more, it's just going to get bigger. So if you start out with a clean brush, it should be very similar. Okay, that's pretty close there. If you go back and touch it up, you're gonna wish you hadn't. So I'm gonna go back with my stylus and just make this a little bit bigger right here. Okay, we'll let that simmer. Let's go back to the eyebrows. Alrighty, so I want his eyebrows to be white, but because we started out with light buttermilk, I'm going to use a light buttermilk base on the eyebrows. And I have just a touch of paint because we're painting a small ornament, so I'm not getting out a big squirt of paint. We all squirt way more paint than we need. Even that's way more than I need. And I'm using my Epic 18 knot script liner. If you need a good, good, good liner brush, this one is excellent. Has my name on it and I wouldn't promote it if it wasn't wonderful. Now, the little ridge above his eyes is the base of the eyebrows. And you kind of have to be careful with eyebrows. And I'll show you this guy. He's right on the edge of looking a little bit grouchy. So the angle of the eyebrows will determine the personality of your Santa. So if you get one that looks a little grumpy, you might adjust his eyebrows. And you all know how mama, when she gets angry, she frowns, her eyebrows go together. So we'll make sure we don't make him frown. And I'm just pulling some little hairs across. And I am right-handed. I always do the left one first so that I can kind of even them up when I paint across. And we'll go back and touch those up, but I want to um, let this dry a little bit. I'm thinking his nose might be a touch too red. So I'm gonna go back with a little bit of I'll pick up some dried clay and just kind of tone that down just a little bit. And if it's still a little bit redder than you like, um, go back and get a little bit of that warm beige. And we'll just kind of lighten that up just a little bit. I don't know if you can see how, what a difference that makes, but it just toned it down just a touch. And we'll let those eyes dry. While we're letting the eyes dry, let's go ahead and work on the beard just a little bit. Now, because we base coated this light buttermilk, we're going to let that work for our beard. And go in with Lindsay, I don't have any Snow White. Okay. Okay, Lindsay's gonna, oh, yes I do, it's right here. <laughs> okay, did you ever set something down and lose it? It was right in front of my nose. All right, sorry, Lindsay. Okay. Lindsay um, has an issue with her foot, so getting up and getting down is not very easy, so I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, where are we at? I have my radical round. And this is a number four round. It has a nice fat belly. I designed this one as well so that I could have a, a good stroke with that full belly. You can hold a lot of paint on it. I like brushes that are real workhorses and take a lot of that stroke work problem out um, so that I can paint quicker and smoother and not have to reload quite as often. And I am working the paint into my brush. I have a lot of paint in my brush, but it still has that nice sharp point. Uh, when I paint, I want it to flow off of the tip. I'm not gonna press down. So I'm just going to go in and start adding. 
Now remember where your top and bottom is. And if you're not sure on the bottom, I've got some painter's tape here. For peace of mind, this is often a good idea. So you won't have to base coat anything else. Just pop a little tape there. There, you won't have to worry about it getting where it's not supposed to go. Alrighty, so we're just gonna paint the beard in there. And I'm doing the up and down strokes. And because my brush is loaded well, I can pretty much start at the top and go all the way to the bottom. If you can't, you don't have enough water and or paint in your brush. You should be able to get those nice long strokes without having to reload every couple seconds. Okay, so we're going to just kind of rough that in. If I were a carpenter, I'd say it's roughing it in. Again, this is something we're going to come back and touch up a little bit later. But I'm kind of swooping and when you paint, you have kind of a natural. Let me go out just a little bit more. Okay, when you, you have this natural pivot in your wrist. So if you just, I've, I've anchored my hand down and I can just pull that around. And same thing around here. I've got that natural pivot. That keeps all of your strokes very, very even and um, flowing. Now, it probably doesn't look much like much on camera, but it's starting to really whiten that up. And while we're at it, I think I'm gonna go back. Let me go in just a little bit more. Go back to those little eyebrows and my Epic Script Liner. Want to really brighten those up. And this is where you can start to add some detail. With the first layer we put on there, it was kind of roughed in. With this one, you can take your time and really whiten that up and add those tiny details. It doesn't look like much if you just look at this, but look at the difference between the two. You can really see how much that brightens it up. So we'll just go back in. You don't want to cover all of that light buttermilk up, just enough to brighten it okay, while we're there. I shouldn't have cleaned my that little comma stroke on the nose. Add a little highlight there as well. Okay, I think his little eyes are dry. We'll make sure they are before you dig into them. Getting a little touch of Snow White on my awesome angle put a little bit of a float. And this is what makes the eyes look kind of glat, like kind of watery and shimmery. And I'm gonna flip it upside down. I wanna swoop it across the bottom and up the right side. Grab my glasses so I hit the edge of it correctly. I am going to the eye doctor at later this afternoon. That's why I had to bump my Time for Create to Chris down just a little bit. Now you don't wanna get it too white, but you know as it dries, it's gonna get a little bit lighter. So you want just that little bit of shimmer in there. And to make it really sparkle, just a little bit of a, right there in the top left of each eye. And my comma stroke on the nose didn't go so well, so I'm just gonna go back with my stylus dip, dot, drag. You've got a perfect comma stroke every time. All right, so we kind of sort of have his face in there, but to me, it doesn't look like it sits very well. And by that, I mean when you're, where your eyes are on your face, they kind of uh, have that socket area. So we need to go back and I'm using the dried clay and just getting a little bit, of, I'm gonna sweep across the bottom so that it has a little area for his eye to sit on. And I know 
know I said this last time, don't get this too heavy. If you get this too dark, it kind of looks like he's uh, not feeling well. And I'm just gonna make a little bit of a, a bridge on there. So I have sort of kind of a bridge to his nose. And I'm just gonna go up that right side just a little bit. If you've lost your shading under the eyebrows, add a little more in there as well. These are little details that do make a big difference. And I know the mustache, or the, yeah, the mustache will be there. I'm not too worried about that. Eyelashes, little details make a big difference because when you thin soft black down, it becomes kind of a purpley shade. I do use lamp black for the eyelashes and my epic script liner make sure you thin that down well if you want a teeny tiny line thin it down black will not it will still be black and you can double check to make sure you have little skinny lines before you put that on there more than three becomes kind of girlish so i always just do a couple two or three Here on my liner, you know what that does. Oh, what a difference that makes. All right, we got a happy little Santa face there. Just gonna add a few little dip dots on his cheeks to kind of rosy them up. Take a look at your cheeks and see if you want them any rosier. And I think we're good there. Okay, let's go back to his mustache. Now, I did not base that in when I did um, the beard. So I'm gonna kind of wing it. Again, if you wanna trace the pattern, now would be a great time to just put that over there. But remember, you just dip dot it, so don't get it wet or get in the wet dots. I like this, this one as a handlebar mustache. It can go up, it can go down, it can curl. Um, there's so many different ways you can do a Santa mustache. And we'll just add this little handlebar in there. This is also where you can clean up any side areas that aren't just perfect. And I know you probably really can't see. I can see on mine where the mustache is. I'm not so sure you can see it on yours, but even those little bit of white that I added on the beard really uh, makes that mustache stand out. And I kind of like the flipped up. I think it makes him look kind of jolly. Now my nose doesn't look so bulbous. Okay, I don't want to get too heavy on that. I'll let it dry and we'll go back and add some more um, paint to kind of bring that in. So, I mean, we are almost finished with the Santa face. It did not take very long at all, right? Okay, so I'll give you a minute to um, catch up, but I want to show you something. I am super excited. I painted um, some Halloween ornaments last week, and I loved how they turned out, and I wanted to share them with you. So I just got them online today. These are so cute. Oh my gosh, look at these little guys. If you are in the mood for Halloween, these are going to be so much fun. My grandson just had a ball. Um, with these. I said, oh, Levi, look at these. I painted these for you. Aren't they fun? So the pattern is available. It is Monster Mesh Mallow Ornaments, PA2041. It's on Covert Distributing's website. And I'm sure Lindsay will put a link on there for you. She's shaking her head yes. Um, Igor, Victor, and Hugo adorable i was excited about these i haven't painted halloween for a while so i was super excited to get these um, on my studio table and they we, we had a great day 
all four of us. Alrighty, so I think my Santa is dry. So I am going to go back and put a second coat on his mustache because you can see through where his little face ended. Using my Radical Round Light Buttermilk, I'm just going to, a second coat should probably pretty much make it opaque enough. Pay attention to the, the top edges. You want that nice and smooth. Alrighty. So we want to tuck that little mouth in there. Super simple. Don't make this difficult. If you can paint a triangle, you're good. Deep burgundy. And we're doing just a dab. All right, my epic script liner. I'm loading it with a deep burgundy. Now, right here in the point of his mouth, we're going to paint a little triangle. Right? Right there. And just go back and fill that in. All right, so we've got his mouth in there. Bottom lip, watermelon slice. Just gonna dip into that a little bit. If you just clean your brush, watch those water droplets that run down on your ferrule, that they don't put a big blop right on your lip. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a little rounded scoop for his lip, right there on the bottom. Got it? So we did a triangle, we did a little round of scoop. Going to go into the Snow White and just pull across a little bit of a shimmer. It's a little bit wet. So I've got a shimmer on the lip. Boom, we're done, just like that. Alrighty, so we need to go in and uh, fuss with his mustache a little bit more. And I'm going to use my Radical Round Snow White and we'll just pull some little strokes across. And just keep these kind of loose and like we're gonna go back and add some more details. Let that alone. I am going into light cinnamon. We need to start adding. This is where we add the magic. This is my favorite part. There's a lot of my favorite parts, but um, when you start doing the shading, I think that's what really, really, really makes everything look fantastic. Hey Chris, mm -hmm. Isabel from Columbia says hello. Hello Isabel from Columbia. Welcome to Ohio. I'm glad you joined us today. Alrighty, I have my half inch angle, a little bit of light cinnamon. Now, we don't want to have a brown beard, but we want to have some nice shading on it. So we're going to do this in layers. Now, when I shade, I don't just go straight across. I kind of go across and then up and down to get that look that it's going down in the hair. So I can go across and I can pull some of that up and down. See how I did that? Go across and you can go up and down. Now if your brush is loaded correctly, you should be very easily be able to pull some of that shading right down. I've not reloaded yet, so I can still really work with that. Let me go out just a little bit more. Okay, so we can see the whole thing. Because the brush is so wet, you can work with these areas. I did leave that um, 
painter's tape on the bottom, but you can see how I go up and down. I can go across and then I can pull it up into the beard. It becomes very soft. This is where you get a lot of detail. Can you see how that really brings that up in there very nicely? Now, if it becomes too brown, not a problem. We can go back and kind of fine tune that with some white paint. But relax and just let that brush create most of the work for you. Look how much better he looks already. Okay, a little bit of more soft black. Now I need to go around his mustache, but um, I want to have a little more control. So I'm going down to my quarter inch angle, picking up more of that light cinnamon. And this is where we kind of, you want to create your mustache. You want to go under his mouth. Oh, I want a bigger mustache than that. Should have done the other side first. See how you can pull it down? It looks like he has a dirty mouth, so I'm gonna move some of that so it's not so dark right under his lip. And I wanna bring this over, so I wanna make sure that I that kind of mark the ends of the mustache. Bring some of it down. And you think, oh my gosh, Chris, that is way too much brown on his beard. Yeah, it is, but we're gonna fix it, right? Because we are decorative painters and we are awesome. Okay, mustache. We wanna have some shading in that as well. Quarter inch angle, I'm gonna swoop right here, across the bottom. And I want this a little deeper, I can push it down and just pull a little bit up there. The paint is still movable at this point, so you can straighten those edges, clean them up, make it look really perfect. And I'm gonna define that in just a little bit more. See how easily you can bring that to life. Now right here, it looks kind of um, straight across. Bring, bring that down just a touch. So look at what you've done. You can go back and clean it up, touch it up, make it look better. So, Pretty cool, it went from yucky ick to like really cool. But wait, there's more, I love this. Okay, so we've got the beard and the mustache there, nicely shaded, but it's pretty brown. I am going in with my Epic Script Liner and Snow White, really gonna load that puppy up well. You wanna have a nice full brush, working the paint into the bristles I still have a nice, long, slender barrel. Very important. The paint is loose, but it's very fluid. Now we can start to go in. Can you see the detail on the mustache? This is where you can add all those little lines. And I like to flip those ends out just a little bit. Pull some light colors over that shaded area. And really brighten up those tips. Don't cover all that brown up. Can you see what a difference, how much brighter this left side, or right side is than the left? And you can go back and keep adding this until you're happy with how white your Santa beard is. Chris, Daisy from Brazil says hello. Oh, Daisy from Brazil, oh my goodness. Welcome, Daisy from Brazil. I feel honored to have you here painting with me. Isn't technology amazing? Think about it, how many times have you attended classes with people internationally? 
It is so awesome. Okay, I think I want to brighten the tips up here. So I'm just gonna focus a little more paint on the tips and look how that brings them out to life. It's always, and I say this a hundred times, it's always the little touches that make such a big difference. Now I do wanna brighten up here by his face. If you want to, you can add a few little curls, but don't go too crazy. I don't want it too, too wide up by his face but right here or right under the hat part but right there i want to make sure that i get enough brightness you want to pull i'm going to take that off kind of driving me crazy that tape down there um i want to really draw the eyes into his face area and if it's dark all around his face you're not going to look that way Lots of moisture on your brush. If it's dragging, get more water. And a lesson I learned from Priscilla Hauser. Okay, now down here, I want it to be a little bit wider. I went to my radical round, because I want to put, and you can spend all day with little tiny strokes. It doesn't matter down here. We're gonna have the holly, not a focal point. You're looking at his face. Just want to brighten that beard up and pull some more white in there. Does that make sense? Get all this nice and bright. And remember, we've got the holly down there, so. Okay, this is where you kind of go back and fuss with it later if you're wondering what you should do or not do. At this point, I wouldn't do anything. There's a little place up here that's white don't like that. So I'm gonna go in with my little um, awesome angle. Just shade that away. I think I put a highlight in there and I don't like that. So there's nothing you can't fix, right? Alrighty, let's go back and start adding We'll let this dry before we put the holly leaves on. And if you painted with me before, this is kind of the same um, as, as the snowman stripes. Start with foliage green. And I like my little radical round. It, again, it just has that nice fat belly on it. I can do a lot of paint. Now, what's really nice about having this light buttermilk Number one, when I go to put my uh, colors on top of it, they're going to be much more vivid and vibrant. Um, and number two, that I won't have to paint them as solid and heavy because I'll let that background kind of work for me. Start with the one right above his head. See how nice, I mean, one stroke, my goodness. Don't work so hard. There, boom. We like that, don't we? Same thing here. It's a little easier when they're shorter. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. I just want to get that nice color on there. If you have a lot of heavy paint on your brush, it takes a while to get it um, smoothed out. And then you've got a real solid dark color as well. Okay, there. Do the same thing here at the bottom. And we'll just start at one end. Take your time, let the brush do the work, and just pull it across. If your brush is loaded correctly, you should be able to have a nice continuous stripe. And I flip it over so I can sort of kind of even up both sides. And I know they're not perfect, but this is a hand-painted ornament. Not everything has to be perfect. And you can follow those little straight lines. I do have an issue with straight lines. Um, I have contacts that's one's close up and one's far away. 
So I have problems with circles and straight lines. So if you struggle with that same issue, if you have multi-vision contacts, that's just kind of a, um, something you have to deal with. So I have lots of circle templates. I have lots of straight edges because I know this is one of my um, weaknesses. So I make sure that um, when I come to these issues that I have the correct tools to help make that easier for me to deal with. All right, so let's go back and we'll base coat the red in. And I want my red to be really bright. So I'm going to put a uh, melon and you can use it doesn't have to be melon. It can be cactus flower, vintage pink, um, any any pretty light corals or pinks will work really well. You just need a background behind the red that will help make it glow. And again, I'm using my radical round, loading it well. And we'll just fill in these little stripes here. And no, they don't look so great with pink and green. Just take your time and line those up well. Oops, I don't want to paint that one. We'll just get this one right here. Just like that. Alrighty. So we'll let those dry. While those are drying, let's go ahead and do our holly leaves. Now, I was going to bring a stencil in because I rarely paint holly leaves because I don't like to. And if I have a stencil, that just makes it super, super easy um, to stencil them in there. So I encourage you, if you have a stencil, it will be super easy. If not, uh, what I do is I do one Got my Epic Script Liner, foliage green, two, and three. And I like either the Radical Round or my Awesome Angle. I like the Awesome Angle because I like to use those points to paint the points. So I can go in. And I don't know why I don't like to do these. They're not horrible to do. But I think with a stencil, you just know you're going to turn out well. And it's, it's just kind of a, and I'm using the, the toe of my brush, and then I can go back in with the flat of it and paint it in. It just takes a little more time to hand paint them, not a big deal. We just get spoiled when we have uh, stencils that make our life so easy. And I am going to have John make me a holly stencil with all different sizes on it to make my life that much easier. Chris Mary Campbell would love a Mrs. Claus design sometime soon. Ah, Mrs. Claus. I do have a Mrs. Claus. Um, that bake cookies for Santa, <coughs> excuse me, but I don't have a Mrs. Claus ornament. So maybe after the junior, no pressure. And I do appreciate suggestions. So they do not fall on deaf ears. I just, um, I, I run out of time. <laughs> oh my goodness. I work all day here at Cupboard Distributing and then I go home and feed my guy and, um, I usually am in my studio the rest of the day. Okay, so I've got a, a base coat on there. It's not super solid, but it's it's fairly smooth. Got my awesome angle and plantation pine. And I'm just gonna shade this pretty much on the bottom edges and just let it blend across. And this should uh, make my leaves very opaque or opaque enough. You want them, you'll know, you want them smooth and pretty. You know what looks good. So after I get this on there, 
and shade it out just a little bit. I'll let it dry and decide whether or not I need to add a little bit more. Now, because this is on his beard, there's gonna be a little bit of a shadow under there. So I'm gonna go back in with my light cinnamon and create a shadow. My light source is top left, so my shadows are gonna be um, the right and below. So I'm just gonna create a little bit of a shadow. It doesn't take much, a little bit of paint goes a long way. And this is on his beard, so this is gonna be a real soft shadow. It's not like it's a hard surface. Kinda of let that, see what I'm doing? I kinda of pull it down so it looks like it sorta of goes into the uh, contour of the hair, kinda of tucked under there. I know there's gonna be berries here, so I put that a little darker there and there. And I think I'm just gonna put a little more shading right here at the bottom. You always go back and add more, so I think I want some there. All right, so we've got that on there. I think that looks pretty good. I think I want a little bit of a highlight on there and I don't have a highlight, so I'm gonna make my own what color would I use for a highlight? It looks like I use like a matcha green. I'm just going to grab a little bit of white. Oops, let me get my other brush here. And I'm good at um, brush mixing, which means I'll grab a little bit of white and a little bit of green. Kind of get that thing going to a brighter highlight. And... Once I get what I want. Oh, it's probably about 50-50. Whoops, just, just enough brighter and you can see the difference there. And I'll just get a little bit of that on my brush. I'm gonna highlight these tips just a little bit. Not a lot, you don't have to do a lot. It's just a little bit to brighten it up. Berries, because these berries are so small, um, we, we could do a melon and top coat them and shade them and all that, but I'm just going to use um, my handle into my brush to make sure I do this correctly. Make sure um, that I'm just going to dip dot with watermelon slice. I will go back and shade them because that's what I do, but three dip dots and I like to stagger them in between the holly leaves instead of right at the base of each one. And I'm dipping and dot, dip, dot, and dip and dot. Now, when you dip and dot, you're gonna get that raised dome of paint. Just take a piece of paper towel. And what you want to do to, to reduce that is wipe the handle end of your brush off and just go in and lift out that excess paint. Be careful, you don't want to make your berries not round. So just takes, a, takes that dome of paint off of there, lowers it down, lets it dry a little bit quicker. Alrighty, so let's let that dry. Hope we won't get our hands in it. I'm going to go back with the red areas and I have watermelon slice. I want a top coat. My reds to make them not pink, but a nice pretty red. Can you see how one long stroke just puts on a beautiful base? And if you take your time and just stroke over that, you won't have to paint uh, much, just one or two cover uh, coats on it and it should be nice and smooth. Let's go down here. Everybody has a direction they paint easier. Mine is top to bottom or left to right. If I don't stop in the middle, I know it's gonna be nice and smooth. That looks good. Alrighty, let's go in and add some peppermint stripes. We wanna do the little stripes at the top. 
and I did three. So the easiest way to do this, if you're not gonna trace your pattern, I have a number four liner, which is the exact size of my stripe. And I'm loading it with watermelon slice. And when you load it, you wanna make sure that you get the paint into the bristles and you don't have big saddlebags on the side. You want it evenly um, dispersed across your brush. Can you back the camera up just a smidge? Someone requested that. Okay, we'll go. Just a smidge. It sounds easy. I'm asked to back the camera up just a smidge. Okay. Well, maybe. And someone else asked a substitution for warm beige. Okay. I'm going to go back to me for a minute because my camera needs some adjusting. Is it a little better? It says low power mode, but I'm hooked, so I don't know. Okay. I didn't want you to have to deal with all that when I took the camera down. Okay, there we go. Is that too much? There we go. Try that. Okay. So why would that be? It says low battery mode, so I better speed up here. To do the stripe, we're going to start with the one in the middle. And we're just going to pull it straight down. Now, if you start out flat and lift up flat, you'll have a straight line. Do not press down or your stripe will get bigger towards the bottom. And we'll do the one on the side. I wanna have a little bit of a curve to it. So I'll start out flat, bring just a little curve. Same over here. And bring just a little curve. While I'm at it, I'm gonna go down here to do this one. Brush is dragging, it's a little bit dry. And pull that straight down. A little curve. Whoops. Until I'm out of water there. Okay, so we've got our stripes in there. Because when you thin watermelon slice out, it gets kind of pinkish. The little tiny stripes, I'm going to use deep burgundy. They will maintain a brighter red when they are thinned out. I'm going with my Epic Script Liner and deep burgundy, and we'll just add that little tiny line. Normally you have two little candy cane stripes, but because this is so small, we're just doing one. It'll get too busy. We want to keep a nice, simple design. Thin that paint, get some nice, long, fluid strokes. Okay, so we've got our little stripes on there. Let's go back to the green while we're letting that um, dry and using plantation pine. Need to add some shading on there to green it up and I'm using my quarter inch angle. No, actually I'm going to start down here and work my way up so I don't drag my hand across it. All right, so I have my awesome angle, the eighth inch. I want to shade the bottom. I want this pretty green. I don't want a lime green stripe. I want to get that loaded just a little heavier here. There we go. You know, it takes a little bit to get that brush just right. Once you can, you get it there, you can go miles. Let that top be a little bit brighter. I think that looks pretty. Mm 
And then this right side, I'll make that a little bit darker as well. And I am gonna bump up to the quarter inch angle to do this little knob at the top. I just think there'll be less brush strokes and it'll look a little smoother. Okay. Same thing here on the bottom. Start here at the bottom with this plantation pine, awesome angle. Put that on there. What a difference that green makes. I mean, it just really richens that color up. Much more Christmassy. Another color that would be really pretty, and I kind of teeter between plantation pine and Hauser dark green. It's more of a holly green. This is kind of an avocado green. You can go back and deepen it if you want. Now, on this bottom little tidbit that hangs down, I'm using my quarter inch angle. I'm going to shade right above that little bottom ridge and down this right side. Because my paint is fluid enough, I can really play with it before I I'll finish it up. All right, so we're doing pretty good on time. Someone asked for a substitution for warm beige. <sighs> hmm. If you had someone asked for a substitution for warm beige, which is flesh tone, um, if you have dried clay, you could lighten it with not white, but light buttermilk. Um, any yellow and red mixed together is going to give you a skin tone. It just depends on how dark you want it. You can mix different colors to get different shades. All right, I have some deep burgundy, my quarter inch angle. Need to shade. You were kind of worried about that being a little messy there at the top. Boom, it's just all taken care of. Same thing down here. We want to get that a little bit of shading in there. Oh, isn't that pretty? This is the best part. Adding all these little bitty touches that make such a big difference. And I want to remind you of our summer fest that is coming up August. Um, registration ends this coming Friday. So if you've not signed up for it, um, time is coming near, and it's important that if you want to take classes, you need to make a decision this week. If you are signed up for it and um, you're not on, and, and you have not joined the private Zoom Facebook group, you need to do that as well because we are putting information on there of different things that come up. I have some light cinnamon shading along the top and the bottom of this little area right in here. And we are not enough water there, Chris. We are getting down to the finish line on this little guy. Oh, look at that. All right, since you've got that awesome angle in your hand, and you've got deep burgundy on your palette. Pick up a touch on the toe of your brush. We're gonna shade these little teeny berries. Yes, we are, just around the bottom, up the right side. You think, oh, that won't make a difference. It makes a big difference. Really makes those berries look rounded, but wait until you put the little highlight on there. Highlights and shading are the two secrets of decorative painting. I can go two dip dots without having to reload. This is Snow White. Oh, wow, look at that. That's so pretty. All right, Epic Script Liner, Snow White. Let's just bring a little bit of a highlight across the peppermint there. 
and across the peppermint there. We need to add some dip dots, but I want to get these little um, comma strokes on here. Now, I, I did them in foliage green. I didn't like them. I did them in plantation pine. I didn't like them. So I double loaded my script liner with a little bit of plantation pine and a little bit of foliage green, and I liked it. So if one color doesn't work or another color, try adding them together. And it's just enough. Can you see that? It's just enough of a variation that you get a, a kind of a two-tone effect on it. So I have my epic script liner, my little bit of foliage green. I'm going to pull my brush through it. I'm flipping it over and I'm pulling it in plantation pine. So if I turn my brush around slowly, I see foliage green on one side, plantation pine on the other. You can double load anything. And I'm just going to make two comma strokes. That one didn't have much plantation on it, so I'm going to, there we go. Evidently, I can't talk while I'm doing comma strokes. Okay. Again, they don't have to be perfect. You just want them to look good, um, decorative. So let's add some dip dots and some more comma strokes. Go with the, I'm gonna let those dry. Up here at the top, and I've got a little, you see that little edge there? I'm gonna clean that up. Look at these little things. You don't want it to be messy my epic script liner and plantation pine. I'm going to add a few decorative strokes up here. Same thing down here at the bottom. And I'm reloading every time just so I get them all consistent. Need to add a few little stripes. And again, I've got a little bit of an unevenness here. Just go back and touch those areas up. Just because you paint quickly doesn't mean you can't go back and touch things up. Okay, I'm going to add some stripes on here. I'm afraid I'm going to get my hand in the comma strokes down at the bottom I just did. And a few down here. The tone on tone decorations like stripes and dots and whatnot are a really good way to add subtle design without being like in your face, too busy or chaotic. Okay. And one thing we didn't do, we need to add a little bit of shading on these red bands as well. I have my Epic Script Liner and Deep Burgundy. It's going to float that across the bottom. You can really tell um, because it looks super flat. So I kind of know that it needs just a little more attention. And we'll put some up here on this one as well. Do you have a substitution for warm suns warm sunset? Warm sunset substitution. What my choice would be persimmon. It's a little bit darker, but it's a very rich um, orangey color. Okay, and we'll put some over here. This one I probably could have went with a quarter inch angle, but I'd like to have that that little bit of control with the eighth inch. Oh yeah, what a huge difference. You know, just that little touch of paint. Okay, let's go back and add some dip dots with uh, plantation pine, and I'm going to just drop them in on this. 
I do two dots before I reload. I can keep them pretty consistent. I didn't add any highlights on the green because the way that I floated the foliage on, the top was a little bit brighter anyways. Oh, I forgot down here. And there. A little empty spot there. We'll stick one down there. And when I did this before, it looked kind of cute, and I thought it was finished, but um, I decided I needed these white polka dots up here, and they made a huge difference. It's like somebody turned the lights on. Right? You agree with that? It looks so much better with these little white polka dots. Oh my goodness. We have been painting for an hour and 11 minutes and I probably talked 10 minutes out of the paint time. So we have finished this ornament very quickly in that amount of time. So you can imagine if you're doing these, um, I'm gonna add just a little bit of, I'm putting a center stem in those holly leaves. If you're doing a lot of these, you can really crank them out very quickly. There we go. I'm gonna lighten that one up. I use my finger a lot of times just to blot a little bit of color out. How cute is that? Oh my goodness, you can crank these out so quickly. <sighs> All right, so I wanna make sure, did I miss anything? Any questions, please let me know. Lindsay is um, editing all of the comments at this point, but I do go back afterwards. Because I don't paint. <laughs> she doesn't paint, but so she knows a <laughs> tremendous amount of uh, painting terminology and information. So if you have any questions, Lindsay knows all the answers. She just doesn't have the um, hands-on experience <laughs> of actually painting. I'm working on that though. One of these days I'm gonna get a paintbrush in her hand. All right, so we talked about Summerfest. Um, we won't be back Crate with Chris until September 1st. After Summerfest, I think John and I are gonna take a couple days and uh, disappear. So uh, we're leaving everyone in good hands with um, our staff here at Cupboard Distributing. Don't forget Summerfest with uh, Sandy McTeer. Friday's the last day registration. And I've, I've Keep an eye out. I've done a lot of new designs. Uh, Jen's getting them put on the website today, and I have a lot more on my studio, so I need a haircut, don't I? Sorry. <laughs> the gingerbread pattern will be up by the end of the week, correct? Yeah, hopefully gingerbread pattern should be up by the end of the week. I thought I would get it up before today, but um, we had early Create with Chris, and then I have to go to the eye doctor to see if I can actually see or not. So that should be up hopefully tomorrow. Oh, and tomorrow we're doing the, what is it? The, um, <laughs> I don't know, Wacky Wednesday. Wacky Wednesday sale. So a lot of good deals. And Jen's gonna be back to do that. Everybody loves Jen. Uh, she's a lot of fun and we have some really good deals for you. So be sure to join back in tomorrow at two o'clock. At one o'clock, we will post that as well, so you won't miss out on that. So mark your calendar, September 1st. Don't forget, sign-ups for Zoom uh, Summerfest Friday, tomorrow at one or two, I'm not sure, uh, Wacky Wednesday sale. And make sure you check out the new product on our website, www.cdwood. I have a lot of new patterns on there. And Sarah says she loves your hair. Oh, thank you, Sarah. She said she loved my hair. <laughs> it's a little bit long, but um, hopefully I'll get a haircut before too much longer. So, all righty. Thank you for joining us today. Create with Chris at Cupboard Distributing. As always, we're so glad you're here. And leave your comments. I'll take a look at them. And um, I'll answer all of them. So open for suggestions, any ideas. Love having you, love sharing, and stay safe. God bless. <laughs>